So I'm going to be speaking about a kind, wise word, or a wise, kind word. Wikipedia describes kindness as a type of behavior marked by an act of generosity, consideration, rendering assistance, or concern for others without expecting praise or return, or anything in return. So keep that um, definition in your mind if you can. I don't normally quote from Wikipedia, I must be honest. <laughs> Um, but I did like that definition best this time around, so one to Wikipedia. And no offense to anyone who uses it. <laughs> the Proverbs 21, 31, sorry, typo. The Proverbs 31, 26 woman is wise and kind. The scripture reads, as you can see above there, when she speaks, her words are kind, and she gives instruction with kindness. In other words, she speaks with kindness. Usually wisdom goes well with any spoken word, right? Especially a kind one. I call wisdom and any good virtue a dynamic duo. And in this case, wisdom and kindness. The kind of wisdom that may look like speaking a kind word in the right context, but also in the right time. Now, if you can, ladies, take a moment and think of just one person who fits that description. One person who you always say, you know, you always seem to say the right thing at the right time, or this person always seems to know what they're talking about or what to say. Just five seconds of my time, I'll give that to you. I hope most of you have had more than at least five names that you have thought of. But I also hope that one of those names were your own name. I know it's a bit bizarre to think of yourself as wise and kind, but just for today, take a moment to do so. Um, just reflect a little bit. Am I wise? Am I kind? And did any of the ladies in here actually think about me? You know? It is easy and common to disqualify ourselves um, from what God has called us to, sorry, because we think certainly this word is not for me. Certainly that is not me, right? But that woman can be any one of you sitting here tonight. You might be sitting there thinking, it's not me, Mo. You don't know my situation. I, um, let's think of something. I am fatigued maybe. I am maxed out. I don't have the capacity to be this kind of woman. You might be thinking, nah, I curse a lot, you know? Um, but, or any other reason that you might have. But actually, this word is for all of us tonight. And I do acknowledge that I may not, may not know your boss, if you think your boss is horrible, <laughs> sorry. I may not know those people. But I do acknowledge that I know we are all in different seasons right now. We cannot all be in summer. We cannot all be in spring. But we are all in different seasons. And in our seasons, we need to be wise and kind. Speak in wisdom and you know, kindness in whichever season that you are in. And I would like to encourage you to arise and speak, ladies. That's what we are talking about, right? Arise and speak in what? Your area of influence. And I know influence, we automatically think work. And I mean, it is a huge area of influence. We spend, what, eight hours there, some of us, unfortunately? <laughs> some more, actually. Um, some less. But we spend a lot of time at work, and it is a huge area of influence. But today, I want to take it back a little. Let's start at home. Because your point of influence is any space where you are interacting with anybody. When you wake up in the morning, who do you interact with? Your husband, your kids, your mom, your dad, your sisters. So let's just take it back home and speak kindness, in kindness and wisdom to our, you know, those who are immediately around us, and especially our kids. And I mean, kids are adventurous, they're curious, and they push boundaries, and they pull boundaries. You know, they will test your faith to be quite honest. There's no one who will test your faith like a kid, especially a five-year-old kid, kid whose name starts with an N. 
Oh, yeah, I love her. But all they're really doing is they are learning in life. You know, they're just learning how to do life. And they're learning from us. So we need to be good examples to them. Since becoming a mother, I think I've become a little bit of a better person. Just a little, you know? I've learned that kids don't easily forget. They may forget what you're saying, but they will not forget how you made them feel. They may forget what, um, oh, no, sorry, they're not going to forget also how, what you did, right? Because that's also a big factor in how um, you make them feel. So kids actually do not forget easily. And we don't want to be the people causing micro traumas in our kids, right? Yeah, we want to be kind to our kids. And it's so easy to be unkind to kids because they are, um, they are volatile. They are, they are just innocent, you know? They cannot fight back. But as women, as mothers, as aunts, um, we just need to show love to them. Um, even if we are fatigued coming back from an eight-hour shift, you know, so let's just give the best to them because they deserve that, right? I found myself in a situation where I had to speak against injustice or, um, yeah, speak against injustice, but also just speak, not injustice actually, speak God's truth, where I had to speak God's truth in someone's life who was um, close to me. And this was a truth that could be potentially offensive. So as you know, I mean, speaking wisdom and kindness is not all about speaking just nice things, right? Sometimes we are in a situation where you've got to speak God's truth. Yeah. And sometimes God's truth is not nice yeah. to the other person. But we need to just step up, you know? Because if we don't, who else will? God might find someone else. But you want to be that person saying, me, Lord, use me. Yeah. Like, I want to be that lady, not okay, you can find someone else. We want to be the ones who raise up our hands, right? So I found myself in this situation, like I said, um, a person that I love dearly was involved in a relationship that doesn't, that doesn't um, fit the blueprint of what God says a relationship should look like between a man and a woman. And um, myself, sorry, I wasn't even... Okay. <laughs> so myself and those who loved um, her, we prayed. And um, we spoke God's truth, but in love and in kindness. And um, we were intentional with our words and what God had laid on our hearts because we knew we had the potential to cause um, harm and deeper emotional wounds. Um, and so... God did it, guys. After many years of praying, after many years of silence even, because sometimes we just didn't have to say anything. After many years, um, she got delivered. And the most beautiful thing is we got to keep our relationship intact. Yeah, so praise to God for that. Words are powerful. With your words, you can soften the hearts of kings. With your words, you can save kingdoms. You can change lives, just like Queen Esther did. Before she approached the king with her request to save the Jews, um, I think you guys can go back to just referring that, um, she sought the Lord's counsel by fasting and praying. And maybe that's something that we ought to do more. You know, go on our knees first before we approach on our feet, right? And we are daughters of the Most High, right? What sets us apart from the world is that we love God. And we love his character. We love his ways. And so this kind, wise word is within every one of our reach. We just need to reach out and keep reaching out for it all the time. Thanks.